Good afternoon, everyone. This is Christian with PerfectStockAlert.com, a 100% free service for smart investors and traders. All we ask in return, please refer a friend. Today, we're going to be looking at the definition of total current liabilities. As we do in each one of these fundamental analysis tutorial videos, I'll give you the actual definition, and then we'll go on to look at some examples and give you a little more insight into how it's actually used. Uh, total current liabilities are the claims to the company's assets which are due within 12 months. Total current liabilities usually makes up several different line items, such as accounts payables, notes payables, etc. A total current liabilities is used to calculate the current ratio as well as the asset test ratio. Now let's go look at an example. Okay, we're going to start off this example looking at Target Corporation. And again, and this is found on the balance sheet. So you're simply going to move on down on the balance sheet here and get to the current liabilities section. We got the old tools here. All right. There, here you have the liability section of the balance sheet. Then you have the current liability section, multiple line items there, accounts payable, short current, long term debt, other current liabilities. And then below that, they will simply sum it all up and say the total current liabilities equals X. And it will be simply the sum total of these other line items above it. And this is a very important figure as it's used in multiple different uh, financial ratios that investors will use and analysts will use to determine whether a company is healthy or not. One of the ones that they will uh, be used in will be the, the uh, current ratio and that's what we'll be talking about uh, in this particular video kind of take you a step further from the uh, obviously total current liabilities is simply the sum of the previous uh, mentioned or the aforementioned uh, current liabilities but there's something that you can do with this particular uh, bit of information so you need to know how to use it to define or determine the actual uh, current ratio what you're wanting to do is simply take and uh, the total current assets which is up here simply the sum total of all the uh, previous aforementioned current assets this number here and you're simply going to divide it by the total current liabilities that's how you come up with the current ratio let me show the formula right quick okay here we have the actual current ratio formula uh, formula right there you can see it's total current assets simply divided by the total current liabilities and the answer to that formula will be the current ratio Looking at target, TGT, you can see that total current assets equals 16.4 billion and total current liabilities equals 14.2 billion. So we simply take this figure here, plug it into our formula right here, then take this figure here and plug it in right here. So we take the total current assets of 16.4 billion, we divide it by the 14.2 billion, and we come up with a current ratio of 1.1513. What does that mean? That means they have $1.15 for every uh, they have $1.15 in assets for every uh, uh, liability or recurrent liability that they have uh, due. So that's what you'd want to see. That's the standard that you look for. Is you got to have a, at least one. If a company has, you know, uh, two dollars of, of debt due this particular month and only one dollar in cash, there could be a problem there. So you want to find a situation where they have, of course, uh, enough money to uh, pay off their their expenses. Their their current liabilities because those are going to be the items that are going to be due within the next 12 months. So it's very important to find that. Uh, Benjamin Graham, Warren Buffett's teacher, would recommend finding companies that had a two uh, or better. Basically, they had two dollars for every uh, dollar of uh, liabilities that they had current. Uh, so that's important little tidbit of information. Uh, if they were to have too much cash on hand and not, I mean, for example, two would be good because you'd have enough to pay the, the expenses that are due not only for this year but for next as well. So if there were something to come up, some little storm on the horizon or something, they could actually weather that storm rather well. But if it were too great, like you would see a six, seven or something of that nature, then that may just indicate that the company is not very efficient in managing their cash. They should be deploying that cash rather than just let it sit there on the books. So something to note. There's also rare cases where you will find the current ratio below one. And that can be a red flag or something that can just be uh, hidden there that you need to dig out. So we're going to show you an example of that. Okay, for this other example, we'll be looking at Walmart Stores Incorporated. Looking at the balance sheet, of course. Let me switch over here to the annual data. So we're comparing apples to apples. We scroll on down here and we can see the total current assets are $54.9 billion. And we move on down a little bit further. We see the total current liabilities are $62.3 billion. Let's plug those numbers into our formula and see what we get. Okay, here is the Walmart data looking at WMT right here. Total current assets are 54.9 billion. Plug that in right here to the total current assets section. Take the 62.3 billion, plug it into the total current liabilities. We simply take the 54.9, divide it by the 62.3, and we come up with a current ratio of 0 0.88. That means they have 88 cents for every dollar that they have of 
current uh, liabilities are going to be due within the next 12 months. So they basically are showing that they don't have enough cash to actually meet their uh, objectives of this month, I mean, uh, of this 12 month cycle there. Uh, that is worse, of course, than the 1.15 condition here. You see on Target, Target actually has more cash on hand. So, what's the catch here? Is, is Walmart in a, in a bad spot? Actually, no, in this particular case, it's not. And I've chosen this case just to make an example. Let's go back to the balance sheet and I'll show you guys a couple of things. It's important to note whenever you're looking at the balance sheet, again, we're now looking at Walmart stores and we're going to move on down here to the liabilities to start there. Whenever you're looking at the total current liabilities, these are, or this is, the money that the company is going to have to pay within the next 12 months. You know that because it's current. And whenever you're looking at this, you know that the accounts payable amount here, this is an actual figure that the company will have to pay. They get that figure based on the, the invoices that they are sent and they and to total those up and then that's the amount that they have. Uh, the short current long term debt, you've watched the videos discussing what this is. This is actually a piece of the long term debt that's due within the principal that's due within uh, the next 12 months. That's at $6.3 billion there. Other current liabilities, we've talked about that as well. You have to go dig into the actual annual report or the 10K to figure out what is the uh, actually in that it's going to be different for every company but this is an actual 26 million dollars that they total this up this is all the uh, the real expenses that companies have to pay that because it'd be 62.3 billion dollars now let's look up here at the total current assets and you'll notice here you've got a figure here as well but not all the numbers listed above are necessarily um, what's really here and here's why you can take situations like the um, in, uh, inventory is a perfect example inventory is listed on the balance sheet at the cost to the company. However, the company's not going to turn around and sell that inventory at their cost, are they? They're going to turn around and sell it for a markup price. And because we also can look at the income statement and figure out how much they're going to mark that up, we can get the, the uh, actual um, uh, gross profit margin there. And we know it's worth about 25%. We can simply take that $40.7 billion, add an extra 25% to that as being the markup, and we'll find when we do the math that way that the Walmart's um, current ratio jumps to being over a dollar. Uh, so you have more than the current ratio is actually 1.05 or something like that when you add in all the extra numbers. So it shows you that even though this one looks like it's got a, a 0 0.88 current ratio, it's actually a 1 uh, on the current ratio standard there. So it's perfectly in line. They're not in trouble in any way, shape, or form. It just looked that way for a moment. You got to remember that, that inventory is listed at cost, not at what they're going to turn around and sell it for. So that's a little tidbit of information and now you know. It's also important to note that this only works when you see a company that's doing this where they're basically um, betting that they're going to be able to sell their inventory. Uh, there's a stipulation with this strategy. That is what happens if they're unable to sell that inventory. If for some reason they, they uh, something comes along where they, they have a really bad recession or something of that nature and they're unable to turn that inventory. If they can't sell, uh, then they're going to have a cash flow problem. Whenever analysts are looking at situations like this, they typically look at what it is the company is selling. In the case of Walmart, you're selling household goods, the typical items everybody's going to need. It takes them 42 days to unload their inventory to actually turn that whole thing. It, they're low cost items that we don't concern ourselves too much with whether or not they can be able to actually sell those items. If we were looking at a company that sold Lear jets or something of that nature, uh, high ticket items, then a s serious recession could actually uh, crimp their ability to unload that inventory. And that could be a red flag there that the company could get into trouble. It has a uh, current ratio that's too low and they're betting on their inventory. That's why the acid test ratio was invented. It basically turns around, takes the current ratio and makes it a little bit harder. It states that the it's run the, mathematically the same way. You use the uh, total current assets or you use the current assets divided by the total uh, current liabilities. However, you do not count inventory or other. So all you're counting are net receivables and higher. So that's just simply what you're doing. The difference between those two is they're saying, okay, forget about inventory. If they couldn't sell their inventory, could they still meet their obligations? That's the hardest test you can run on a balance sheet, the asset test ratio. We actually have a video going over exactly how to uh, calculate that and so forth and so on. So I won't get into that in this video. This video is getting too long anyway. But now you know basically everything you need to know about the current ratio and you also now know uh, the um, actual difference between assets and liabilities is that the liabilities are actually written down what they have to pay and the assets, some of them are written down at what they cost them
Please take a moment to review our disclaimer. The information provided herein is our opinion only. Under no circumstances do any statements here represent a recommendation to buy or sell securities or make any kind of an investment. You are responsible for your own due diligence. To summarize, we do not provide investment advice, nor do we make any claims or promises that any information here will lead to a profit, loss, or any other result. These videos are for educational purposes only.